Yeah, it's true. The coal engine P2, it's offline. Because it's gotta go to the next reviewer in its review cycle. So big thanks to Jingle Mining for giving me the opportunity to test this miner for a month. I've had it a month, I've got to test it, I've got to make some revenue off of it. Uh, and a lot has changed in the month since I released my initial video, which you can check out in the card above, giving an overview and testing hash rates of this coal engine P2 FPGA miner. So please check out that video if you haven't already. So it's been 30 days, so I wanna do a couple things in this video. One, I wanna show you how much revenue I've taken in and how much profit I've taken in mining with this here at my house in the last 30 days. And I also wanna go over everything that has changed, because quite a lot has changed in the crypto space, and that definitely impacts the revenue and profitability of this FPGA. First things first, thank you again to Jingle Mining for sending this over. Here's the Coal Engine P2 link down in the description if you wanna pick one up or check it out a little bit further. So as I was saying, I made this video on this being potentially the best FPGA monitor, certainly the best one that I've ever tested, more on that later in this video. And I made this video a month ago uh, and I tested all their algorithms on it and then I just been letting it mine nonstop 24 seven since then. And we'll go into how much money I've made a little later in this video. But when I made this video, these were the cryptocurrencies and the algorithms that I could mine with it. And a lot has changed since then if you're looking at these. We're gonna go over that now, then we'll go into some profitability for this. But looking at this list, Ironfish, you certainly can't mine that on this anymore. They went under their hard fork to fish hash, which is now GPU friendly. So that cannot be mined with FPGAs any longer. Uh, Alephium is in the headlines right now because there are ASICs, as we all figured there would be. There are ASICs that are released and there will be certainly more coming. So although you can still mine Alephium on this FPJ, its days are certainly numbered. So I'm just gonna consider that one out because very shortly it will not be profitable. Uh, Radiant underwent its halving and so the block reward was cut in half and so profitability there has absolutely been close to cut in half. I think there's been some price action on Radiant lately. Um, and so you can still mine it, but profitability just isn't there. We'll look at that in a second. So that really just leaves Carlson Hash and the cryptocurrencies that use that algorithm as the only viable solution right now, which also means all the other FPGAs that are out there, coal engines or not, have then had to shift over to those cryptocurrencies, which means that there's less pieces of the pie to go around, which means unless the price appreciates quite dramatically, the profitability is certainly much lower. So let's hover to what to mine. This is the Coal Engine P2 that I have in here with a custom, all my custom overclocks. Uh, and this is the profitability right now on a residential, average residential electric rate. So coming up top, you can see all those Carlson hash uh, cryptocurrencies and they're making right now about $5, a little over $5 a day in revenue. Uh, in profit, about $10 a day in overall revenue. And you can see Alephium certainly coming down, much less profitable than it was before. And then Radiant only making 12 cents uh, because of the reduction of the block reward with the halving. So things have certainly changed. When I made that other video, we were looking at $15, $20 per day in profit. Um, but because of everything that I just covered, that profitability has certainly come way, way, way down. And the price of the coal engine P2 certainly has not. So what needs to happen here is really more bit streams. More bit streams need to be released for this miner from Superscalar so that it can spread the hash rate across other cryptocurrencies uh, and you can realize some profit again. And that's just, like this is not surprising. Like this is what FPGAs do. FPGAs are like that sneaky guy that like sneaks in the side of your house when nobody's looking and just takes over all your GPUs before the ASICs arrive and kick it out. That's really what happens here. So this is no surprise, this is what always happens and which leaves you at really the mercy of the Bitstream developer, in this case, Superscaler, to continue to put in the work to release Bitstreams for you to find profitability again. And looking at some of the stuff that's happening in the FPGA world, there looks to be Bitstreams auto released for like the C1100 FPGAs. So I'm hoping that Superscaler has those come in for the Coal Engine P2 uh, for anybody that has one or is looking to buy one of these. Okay, so I think that brings us to checking out how much revenue that I've brought in with this Coal Engine P2 in the 30 days that I've had it. 
So I heavily mine on Carlson hash, and I mine that over on K1 pool with Nautilus. I'll leave a video, a link to my video on that up in the card above. I did some odds and ends on Radiant and um, Carlson and Lathium, and that probably was around $20 that's still sitting on the pool that I got to get out. But the majority of my mining happened on Nautilus, as you can see, still coming up uh, amongst the most profitable to mine with this coal engine P2. And so I was sending all of that to Zegex and just cashing it out instantly. And so here's what I have in uh, Tether sitting on Zegex that I still have to get out. If you've been watching my videos, I still have to do that. Uh, and I absolutely will. So there's my USDT, which is equivalent to US dollars amount that I have mined with this coal engine P2. So we'll just say another like, you know, $20 on top of that from the other odds and ends that I've mined with this that are still sitting in that cryptocurrency. Plus, I still have a pending payout on K1 pool uh, for Nautilus since I shut this off. So we'll just say $500. $500 is what I mine with this in 30 days revenue-wise. When I back out the electric that I've used on this, talking about $5 a day, then I'm looking at about $150 in electric, leaving me a profit of $350 on this coal engine P2, which is amazing, right? That's great. It's great for my scenario, getting to review this and borrow this for a little while. Um, but it's also great for anybody who did purchase one of these to realize some of that early profit. And I know the future remains a little uncertain for this FPGA and what's going to happen. And it's not a great feeling to be at the mercy of Superscaler. But I will say just, and I guess the limited, but more than most people exposure that I've had to FPGAs going back to the black miners from Hash Allcoin to the C1100 Xilinx, uh, and now to this Coal Engine P2. Uh, this thing is awesome. It's super loud, but it's very efficient uh, and certainly can be very profitable at the right times, though you are at the mercy of now Superscaler telling you and releasing when the right time's gonna be. So this is gonna get boxed up, get shipped out, but I will say that I did enjoy it so much that when Jingle Mining said, hey, we need that thing back, I said, hey, can I please buy it from you? And they said, it's got to go to the next reviewer, but we can talk soon. So anyway, that's it. That's the wrap up on the Coal Engine P2X. Great miner, super loud miner, uh, if you're thinking about residential, uh, and still a big risk as with any FPGAs. This is just kind of the story here. Nothing surprising has happened. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like button if you did. Sub to the channel for more FPGA. GPU, ASIC, crypto content in general, Discord, social media links all down in the description below. Leave some comments if you have any questions or have any thoughts about this FPGA. And as always, please take care of yourself and each other, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm really going to miss you, buddy. It's been nice. You take care.